Okay, let's get started. This is lecture 17. We're starting a new kind of unit here, a uh, short unit on like linear programming and semi-definite programming, which will extend into a longer meeting or longer um, unit on constraint satisfaction problems and hierarchies and some other things. Okay, so uh, as always, I'll put up some resources here. A uh, nice uh, simple book. There's many, many books, but a nice simple book about uh, linear programming is this one by Matushek and Gartner. And if you want the full details on every possible aspect of uh, the theory of linear programming, you can check the Groucho Lovas Schreiber book at the bottom. Okay, so linear programming. I know you uh, probably know something about it, but we're gonna go over it again because it's definitely the greatest polynomial time algorithm. Let's just uh, be honest about it. It's fantastic. Actually, there's a bit of a, um, a miss, uh, not misnomer, but I said it not quite correctly. Linear programming is not an algorithm. It's a, uh, a problem. But the fact that the, this problem is solvable in polynomial time is, you know, in my opinion, the greatest fact in algorithms theory because uh, so many things can be done with linear programming and uh, it's really great. Okay, so what is the linear programming problem? Uh, the, inter, uh, the input to the linear programming problem is a list of inequalities. Okay, so, um, you know, when you're solving a system of linear equations, you have a list of equations in variables x1 through xn. Here we have a list of inequalities in equations. Uh, in let's say n variables and m unknowns. So you can think of everything happening over the reals, but since you know, you're know you supposed to be given this as an input to a digital computer, we assume that the coefficients, the a's and b's are all rational numbers represented as just pairs of integers, numerator and denominator. Okay, that's the input. And uh, there's a geometric interpretation to it. So for every inequality like this a1, x1, plus a2, x2, plus dot, 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 plus a and xn, uh, that's geometrically a half space. The set of uh, the points in real space that satisfy this is a half space. So if you had equality like a1, x1, plus dot, 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 plus a and xn equals b, uh, that's a half plane or a hyperplane. Okay, and uh, the inequality gives you everything on one side of that hyperplane. And uh, so K is supposed to represent the conjunction of these. So we have a sort of a conjunction or intersection, if you will, of hyperplanes. And their intersection is the set K. It's, a, it's like a polytope represented by these inequalities. Um, now, sometimes uh, you might have lots of inequalities, but the intersection of all of them might be empty. So I put this green inequality up here. And if you look at the green inequality, it misses the triangle that was formerly k. Um, so it's possible that the intersection of all these inequalities leaves nothing. And in some sense, this is the linear programming problem to tell, is there a, you know, is this k the empty set or is there at least one point in it? Okay, so that's the input. And um, yeah, so it looks a little bit um, uh, oversimplified because I only have inequalities. Um, but you can make a few variants on this, as you possibly know. So if you want to have uh, less than or equal to, other, instead of greater than or equal to, well, you can uh, do that just by negating the inequality. Um, if you want to have equalities instead of just inequalities, or a mix of inequalities and equalities, um, that's no problem as well. You can just put in two inequalities in both directions, less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. If you want to have strict inequality, well, can't have it. Sorry about that, but uh, that's one thing that's not allowed. We always want to just have um, greater than or equal to in these uh, linear programming problems. And you might be most familiar with linear programming, not as just, uh, you know, you're given a bunch of inequalities and you want to know, you know, can they be satisfied or not? Is there a point in the intersection of all these half spaces? But rather, it's a problem of, you know, given a bunch of inequalities to maximize a linear form like this c dot x here, um, subject to these inequalities. And uh, this is also called linear programming, and you can do that too, but um, we'll get there a little bit later. For the purposes uh, so far, uh, we'll just stick with this question about, you know, given some inequalities, uh, can they be satisfied simultaneously or not? Okay, are there any uh, questions to this point? Okay, not hearing anything. Hopefully you can all uh, still follow along as I go. Okay, uh, right, so 
you know, you can think of this as a decision problem, given these inequalities, just decide yes or no, is there a solution to all of them? But you might ask for a bit more. For example, if the answer is yes, there's at least one solution, k is not empty, then the natural question is to actually find a point x that satisfies all the inequalities. And interestingly enough, if k is the empty set, you shouldn't, you know, ideally just say, yep, it's empty. What would be really great out of an algorithm given such a k would be to output a proof that there's no solution to these inequalities. And in fact, we're going to talk about how that's um, possible. But we'll come back to that, uh, exactly what a proof is. Uh, I should remind you, or what I want to tell you, though, is that this problem, as stated, the linear programming problem, is solvable in polynomial time. And that's a wonderful fact that we're going to actually take for granted in this uh, lecture, but we'll talk about it in subsequent lectures. Um, this was first proved by Kachian in 1979. It was uh, the USSR time, so he's, I suppose, a Soviet person, although you can tell he's of uh, Armenian heritage from his surname. Uh, he was actually a PhD student at the time when he solved this. It's a little bit funny, though, because he solved it using an algorithm called the ellipsoid algorithm, which we'll talk about uh, later. You know, in the 50s and 60s, when this was studied, you know, a lot in America and in other places, they um, didn't know if it was polynomial time solvable or not, but they had a different algorithm, the simplex algorithm, which they seemed to think worked well in practice, but it was a big question of whether you could actually solve it, you know, in P. And you can, thanks to Kachian's work. As I said, though, he uses a thing called the ellipsoid algorithm, which is originally developed by um, Naum Shore in the early 70s and um, uses a tool for convex optimization by Nemirovsky and Yudin in the 70s. And I think they were like more practically minded and they weren't really thinking about like, oh, let's you know, see if it uh, shows that linear programming is solvable in P on a Turing machine. Um, so the ideas and techniques date back to these works, but uh, Kachian published in 1979 a proof that uh, it's in P. Actually, he didn't give the proofs. He just gave a sketch of how it worked. And it wasn't until uh, you know, everybody you know, in the West got excited about this, um, and particularly these two Hungarian guys who are a nice bridge between the East and West, uh, Gatz and Lovatz, Lovas. Um, they kind of read his work and um, figured out how to fill in the gaps in the proof. So maybe they were the first to publish a proof, although in 81, Kachian published the full details of his proof. And I should also mention uh, shortly that after Gottschall, Lovash, and Shriver showed that you can um, do many other related things in polynomial time, like find vertices and um, optimize even with a separation oracle and all these other things that we'll eventually get into. Uh, I just want to briefly say that, you know, it's funny to think about, but it was, what, um, 40 years ago? It was really big news back then. So this is the front page of the New York Times in November, December, 1979. You can say down here, it was front page news, a Soviet discovery rocks the world of mathematics. It was about Kachian's paper. So you can, uh, I don't know, take a look at these slides afterwards. Actually, I thought it was a little bit funnier to show like a follow-up article from, I think, a month later, or even less than a month later. This is from Tuesday, November 27th, 1979, front page of the science uh, section. And it was about Kachian himself. Soviet mathematician is obscure no more, it says. And uh, yeah, that's the top top story, plus ça change. Um, yeah, but about Kachian, I just think it's funny, you know, it starts out by talking about the mystery author of a new mathematical theorem, and um, the dark-haired bachelor says he was somewhat surprised by the enthusiastic response and so forth, and it ends by, this is the end of the article, and uh, says, you know, his absorption in his work appears to be total. I tried to take up karate as a hobby about three years ago, he said, but now I do mathematics instead. So, uh, good times, yeah. Uh, there's another follow-up article from New York Times. And it's also, you know, when, you know, Kachian showed his linear program is in P, it made the front page of The Guardian and Der Spiegel. So it's really big news. So I'm, you know, happy to tell you about it today. Actually, probably uh, Kachian's daughter is more famous than Kachian himself right now. You can follow her on Twitter. She's got 46,000 followers. Okay, but enough uh, history lessons. Uh, let's go back to the math. So here's the linear programming problem again. And uh, actually, what I want to actually talk about today, we won't talk about the polynomial time algorithm yet, but we're going to talk about sort of the theory of it and why it's possible that you can solve it in polynomial time. Uh, in the next lecture on Thursday, we're actually going to talk about applications of linear programming in combinatorial optimization, but today will be about sort of the theory of linear programming. And uh, let's actually, uh, one way we're, oops, I wanted to say something about that. Um, 
you know, the fact that this problem is solvable, you know, the fact that when k is empty, you can find a point x in polynomial time, one interesting thing that that implies is that a solution, if it exists, can be written down with polynomially many bits. And that's actually not obvious. Uh, so that's interesting. We'll get into that. And, you know, on the other side, what if k is the empty set? Well, we'll think about that too. So uh, let's now sort of dive into this question about what is meant by a proof that a system of linear inequations uh, cannot be satisfied? Or what would like a proof for a certificate that an algorithm might output look like? Okay. Uh, any questions? <laughs> 